We want to make our navigation responsive and we have to do that using a media query. So this is what we currently have and we want to make it look like this when it reaches small screen sizes. I'm going to give you a little bit of a hint right now. I'm going to use the breakpoint of 675 pixels when I do it and everything we need to be able to do this we have learned. Now media queries we haven't done a lot with so if you're not super comfortable with them that's cool watch me and see how I do it but I'm going to encourage you to see if you can figure it out. If you make a mistake, that's fine. I'd even say go and watch the video on media queries and then come back and do this because I want you to make mistakes because making mistakes is how you're going to learn because you're going to get stuck on something and then you're going to watch me do it. And then it's going to be like, oh, that's the stupid thing I was missing. And then you're going to be able to do it. You're going to do it and it's going to reinforce it. So try if you get stuck, go and watch the media query video. If you still can't do it, then you can watch me do it. Or once you've got it, you can see how I do it uh, just to see if we're on the same page or not. And uh, of course, I will try and explain things in as much detail as possible on how I'm doing things. And again, the breakpoint I'm going to be using is a max width of 675 pixels. All right, so the very first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to come to my container nav here because this is where we have my display of flex. And we know that if I do a flex direction of column, um, it's going to switch things. So now these are stacking one on top of each other, whereas before, when we turn that off, they're going one next to each other like that. So this is what I want to be able to toggle on and off. So I mentioned a max width. So we're going to stick with that for now, and I'm going to create my media query. So at media, I'm going to put a space, put my parentheses, put my, my curly braces, and put a empty space, and I can come in and put in my max width of 675 pixels. Now, how I got that number, it was through a little bit of experimentation. Let me talking about how you can figure out what numbers you want here. Not in this video though, but when we start working on the bigger layout. So in here, I want to select once again, my container nav. And this is one of the mistakes that I still make, as I mentioned before, where I forget that I have to redo my selector because I'm looking here. So if that was the mistake you made, just always remember when you're in a media query, you still need your selectors just like as if you were outside of it. The other thing is always the media query after your selector and not before it, or it will not work. Um, in this case, it might because we're not overwriting something, but still always try and keep your media queries after your selector. So we can in here do our flex direction of column. And so now if we come back and take a look at it, at large screens, it's looking normal. But when I hit that 675, which is really close to when the text there, you can see it, the whole thing hops down. So this is a good start. But now I also want to change the direction. I want to bring these to be stacking on one on top of each other. And I want everything to be centered. So let's see if we can do that. Um, so here is where I have my header. So we need another media query for it. If you're going, well, I just made a media query. I don't want to write the whole thing out. And I did say before, you can always keep them grouped together to make it a little bit easier. You could also say I'm in my layout. I'm going to put all my layout ones together at the bottom. If you did a separate media query, that's completely fine. You're not bloating your CSS file too much. Maybe it is, we talked about dry and it's not super dry, always writing them over and they are kind of long to write. So um, there's nothing wrong with say grouping all my layout ones together here. So it's still inside the media query and I'm paying attention like this is the end of my media query. So I'm coming inside my media query and I'll select my header. And on here, I'm gonna do my text align center. So that takes care of this and it centers it. Cause if you remember before we switched that, we'd originally had it on there and we turned it off. So now I'm adding that text align center back in to center this. And it goes back to almost that original layout that we had the first time now. Um, but the cool thing is here it's like that. And then as we shrink down, we switch from left align to center and they pop one on top of each other. So it's a really good start. The next thing that I wanna do though, is I do want these to stack one on top of each other as well, because we want it to work at really small screens. And when we get to this tiny screen size, this looks pretty terrible. So for that, I have all my navigation stuff. Let's come all the way to the bottom of all of that. I can put my media query. I'm just pasting it because I already had it copied. And I want to keep the same breakpoint. You will have you will have times where you have multiple breakpoints, but try not to have them like 676 and then this other one's 679. If you have something at 675, just keep them all at 675. And um, just so you don't get a whole bunch of weird jumps going on, it makes your life a lot easier as well to know when things will be changing. We already have a display flex on my nav UL. So I see my nav UL display flex is making them go next to each other. So that means the same way we did before I can select that nav UL and I can put a flex direction on there of column. And now we can see that they're stacking one on top of each other. 
but they're not centered. Well, that's weird. Why aren't they centered? That's because of this margin left that I put on my nav li. So that means I have to come through, I have to come down here and go to my nav li, and I want to redefine my margin. Now, in this case, they're really stuck close to each other up and down, but the margin is breaking in the left and right. So on my margin shorthand here, I'm going to give it like a 0.5m on the top and the bottom. And on the left and the right, I'm going to set it to zero. But if we just did a 0.5 on all sides, it would probably be fine. And we can come take a look and look at that. It is looking awesome. And it's working at small screen sizes and it's working at big screen sizes. And everything is great. And somewhere along the way, I did lose my underlines. So if you want a bit of practice, uh, you could go and add that back in yourself if you feel like it. But right now, I'm super happy with that. You've made a ton of progress. Navigations, for one of the simpler and smaller elements on a page, they're super complicated. There's so many different pieces to them through the header. So we always have our header. We have something on the left. We have something on the right. Then we have to get our navigation, all pieces to go on the left and the right of each other. And oh, the, for something that's really small and they... <laughs> They, they do take a lot of styling. So you just did this. You just did one of the more complicated parts of most websites. So a bit of a pat on the back, probably a nice time to take a little bit of a break. If you feel like you want to revisit media queries a little bit and go back through them, do that now before we move on, because we will be using them a lot. But we're going to start building out a whole layout. And I think it would be a good time to take a break now just to help let everything absorb and sort of sink in a little bit before we go into the full big layout that we're going to be building, which is just going to be taking everything we've learned so far and giving us a lot of practice on all of that to help reinforce things even more. But it will take us a while to get through that layout because it is a pretty big thing that we will be building out with lots of different pieces.